Hello and welcome to the Buzzing Trends by Calcine TV. I'm your host Holly and today we're going to discuss how the recent Evergrande crisis is affecting the ASX listed miners. Well, to kick it off, shares of ASX listed iron ore miners including Rio Tinto, Fortescue, Metals Group, BHP were already under pressure due to a significant slump in iron ore prices. Now, the current Evergrande financial crisis has added insult to injury. So let's quickly scan through what the Evergrande debt crisis is all about. Well, the Chinese property giant is under huge financial trouble while traders and investors are worried about its spillover risks to the economy. The property giant has made aggressive steps to expand and become the country's biggest real estate company by borrowing $300 billion. Beijing, however, placed a cap on the amount of property that can be owned by mega real estate groups. And the rule introduced last year has forced Evergrande to sell out its properties at heavily discounted rates to maintain cash flow and to keep business afloat. Now, the real estate player is struggling to repay interest payments on its debts and the uncertainty has impacted the company's shares by nearly 85% in the last year. So, how does the Evergrande crisis impact the ASX miners? Well, Australia is one of the leading suppliers of minerals to China, especially iron ore. And it's the hardest hit sector of the country due to Evergrande's financial crisis. China is the world's biggest importer of iron ore, which uses most of it to produce steel. In fact, nearly half of the steel produced in China is used in the country's construction sector. And the current spillover of Evergrande's financial crisis has dampened demand for Australian iron ore in China's steel industries because of the subdued demand for steel in the construction sector. So with that said, let's have a quick scan of the reflection of Evergrande's crisis on iron ore prices. Well, the reflection of the property giant's crisis can be easily witnessed in the iron ore trading prices. The base metal was trading at a record high level of nearly $220 per tonne during July of this year. However, prices tumbled to less than half of its record high level to trade at just over $105 per tonne. Global iron ore miners were already struggling to get substantial earnings before because of the lower demand for base metals. This pressure was witnessed amid production curbs in China as the nation aims to attain carbon neutrality by 2060. Moreover, the current Evergrande crisis has further pushed iron ore to surrender. Well, now before we look at the impacts on the other sectors, the ASX 200 could be hit. Let's have a small break. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Calkind's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Calkind TV. Hello and welcome back to the Buzzing Trends where we're looking at the Evergrande crisis and how it's affecting ASX listed miners. Well, let's see if the impact goes to other sectors now. And yes, of course it does. Many peg it as China's Lehman Brothers moment. However, China being a centrally planned economy, this seems far-fetched. There are also concerns about Huarong, a Chinese state-owned financial conglomerate that has liabilities of nearly $240 billion. Huarong is reported to be in trouble as well, escalating the perception of a wider systemic crisis in China. But then the Chinese banks that have lent to Evergrande would surely be hit as well. And in this case, there is a contagion and other realtors also hit. There could certainly be a slowdown as far as the demand picture across many of the metals. So there is really the concern on the commodities front as well. 
And China, as you likely know, has the world's most voracious appetite for iron ore. While it produces some of its own, it also holds the mantle as the globe's biggest importer of the mineral. Most of that ends up in the street, and roughly half of it is used by China's construction sector. Should, the, uh, should that construction sector take a beating, if Evergrande is allowed to sink, well, it's quite likely that it will see a reduced demand for Aussie iron ore. Or it could cast a pale over the commodity prices as well, as these prices have already been tumbling in the past few weeks. In the final weeks of July, a ton of iron ore was trading at new record highs of 220 US dollars. Iron ore futures in Asia rebounded on Wednesday. However, concerns remained on whether gains could be sustained on the back of the collapse in China's demand and improving supply prospects. January iron ore on China's Italian Commodity Exchange entered 3.7% higher per tonne. And that, as you'd expect, has put the ASX 200 iron ore miners under pressure. It's little wonder then that investors in the ASX 200 miners are keeping a close eye on how the Evergrande crisis evolves. To sum up, the ASX listed iron ore miners are struggling hard due to ongoing chaos in the Chinese steel industry. Initially, prices of iron slumped due to production curbs in China, and now the demand for the base metal has been plummeting due to lower demand for steel in the country's construction sector. Evergrande is in a mess, to say the least. China has overleveraged leveraged itself, sorry, and it's also widely known that the property boom in the country has overlasted. But we also know that Evergrande is set to default, and that it has not yet, you know, not yet defaulted. Sorry, as I say, it doesn't happen until it happens. So let's out, let's watch out for what transpires in this space. On that note, it's time to wrap up the show now, but keep watching Calcine TV for more live market updates. Holly Shields signing off.